Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2012 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it reads, V. Cheeseman is preparing his summary accounts for the month ended 31st August 2011. He finds the following errors, which may or may not affect the summary of the bank account entries in his cash book. Okay, let's take a look at those errors, shall we? First up, it says a purchase of $303 paid by check was recorded in both accounts as a purchase of goods valued at $330. So that figure is too high, so we're going to have to fix that. Next, we're seeing an error that says a check for $467 sent to a creditor, our son, has been recorded in our SANS account only. So if it's a check, we were supposed to record that in the bank account as well. So this is a one-sided error. So we we'll probably need the suspense account for that. Okay, next, we have a check received from C. Samner for 290 was debited in Samner's account and credited in cash book. So that's a reversal because if we receive a check, we're supposed to debit the cash book and credit whoever it comes from, but we did the opposite. Now, what do they want us to do? It says, prepare the journal entries to correct the errors above. Narratives are not required, seven marks. So before we jump into correcting the errors, if you don't know anything about correcting errors, I'm going to put a link, a card, sorry, up there with a link to my errors playlist. And you'll also find that same link in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you know nothing about correcting errors and then come back here so you can go through this question a bit more comfortably. If, however, you do feel relatively comfortable with uh, correcting errors, sorry, then let's proceed. Okay, so going back to the first error, it says a purchase of $303 paid by check was recorded in both accounts as a purchase of goods valued as $330. Okay, so clearly the amount actually used was too high by $27. How did I get $27? The amount actually used is $330 and the amount that should have been used is $303. So 330 minus 303 is 27. So that means that the purchaser's account has been debited for $27 too much and the bank account was credited for $27 too much. So what we have to do when the entry is too high or is an overstatement is reverse the double entry. So if you go across to our general journal, so I've stripped it down a bit. I don't have a date column. I don't have a folio column because again, they don't provide us with information to populate the folio column. So as you should know by now, when you are entering information in the general journal, you enter your debit entries first, then your credit entries second, and your credit entries are indented relative to your debit entries. So like I said, the purchaser's account was debited for too much and the bank account was credited for too much. So to reverse it, we're going to have to debit bank and credit purchases. Now they said no narratives required, so let's go to that second error. It says a check for 467 sent to creditor Arsan had been recorded in Arsan's account only. Okay, so if we send a check to somebody, we'll, we'll debit them. So we, we, we did debit Arsan. It said it had been recorded in Arsan's account only, but we didn't credit the bank account because it said we recorded it in Arsan's account only, which means the other account that was affected by the transaction was not, well, the information was not put there. So we're missing a credit to bank. So we are going to put that credit to bank, but what about a debit? Because every credit must have a corresponding debit. So in this case, we use an account called the suspense account. So the suspense account is an account used for this particular purpose where there are errors that only affect one side of the books, as in only the debit side or only the credit side, or the error affects both sides by different amounts. And again, be sure to check out that errors playlist and you could go straight to that suspense account video if you feel comfortable with the errors before suspense accounts. Okay, and I think there was one more error, which was a check received from C. Samner for 290 was debited in Samner's account and credited in the cash book. So again, this is a complete reversal of entries. We were supposed to debit the cash book because we received the check and we were supposed to credit Samner. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to debit cash book and credit Samna, but we are going to do it for double the amount. Why double the amount and how is 5A to double the amount? Well, remember the amount that was supposed to be recorded was 290. We're using 580, which is a double the original amount, once to cancel the error. And the second time, we are using it to populate the information in the way it should have been entered in the first place. 
So when you make two debits to bank for 290, it's the same as making one debit to bank for 580. Similarly, if you make two credits to C Samna for, for 290 each, it's equivalent to making one credit to C Samna's account for 580. Okay, that's the first part of the question. Let's take a look at the second part. All right, so it says V. Cheeseman records the following figures in his summarized cash book before correcting the relevant errors. So let's take a look at this summarized cash book, shall we? So it says bank columns only for the month ended 31st August 2011. So we have a almost like a vertical bank account here. Open and balance plus receipts. That's a total of money available minus payments. And we have closing balance. Now it goes on to say that beginning with the incorrect balance of 2,570, which we saw just above there, correct the summarized cash book for the relevant errors given above. Show all working, five marks. Okay, so as they, as they requested us to do, we're going to start with the balance before adjustments of 2,570. Now, if we take a look up at the general journal entries that we just made, we're gonna see there's a debit to bank of 27, a credit to bank of 467, and another debit for 580. The two debit items are going to increase the bank account, so we're going to add those. And the one credit item is going to decrease, so we're going to subtract that one. Now, you don't have to go in any particular order. I just went in the order of appearance. So I added the overstated purchases amount, and I'm adding it because, remember, if you credit too much, you're taking too much out of your bank account. So you have to kind of put back the extra amount you took out that you shouldn't have taken out in the first place. So you're adding it back. Next, we have the less omitted payment. So we forgot to put in the payment. Remember, we, we recorded it in, in our SANS account only. So we didn't record the payment as coming out of the bank account. So we have to subtract the omitted payment. And finally, of course, correction of the reversal. So we received money, but we put it as a payment. So what do we have to do? We have to put it as a receipt for double the amount. Once to cancel the payment that should not have been made and once to enter the information as it should have been entered. Now, when you add and subtract going down, we now have a corrected cash book balance of 2,710. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. All righty, so it says the following information is recorded in either the bank statement or in V. Cheeseman's cash book, but not in both. So we have a little table here and somebody was ticking on my past papers. Hmm. So we have bank charges, standing order for vehicle insurance, Check dated 30th August 2010. Send to hey, boy. Send a supplier 570. Well, I wasn't born 2010, but you know. So check returned stamped insufficient funds 390. Direct deposits from debtors 4500. Deposit to bank on 31st August 2011 990. Now it says the bank statement for the month ended 31st August 2011 shows a balance of 5680. What are we required to do? Well, we have a couple of things. Firstly, we have to use the corrected summarized cash book balance from A part two above, draw up an updated cash book for the month of th month ended, sorry, 31st August 2011. So we have to update the cash book using the 2710 that we just found in the previous part of the question. And following that, we have to start with the updated cash book balance, draw up a bank rec statement for V Cheeseman for the month ended 31st August 2011, three months. Okay, so one thing at a time. Let's open up our updated cash book and we are going to put in our balance of 2017 that we just found. Now let's go back to that table and take each item one at a time. So bank charges are amounts that the bank charges us for upkeeping our account or for transactions they have to execute for us in these things. So that's a payment, a decrease, and that's going to go on the credit side of the bank account or cash book. Now, before I go any further, if you have no clue how to do bank recs, how to update cash books, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below to my bank recs playlist. Be sure to check it out. Bank recs was a very difficult topic for me. I didn't understand it for Form 4, Form 5, Form 6. Only when I got to UE and there was a textbook there that broke it down real simply, I understood it. So I took my time and made videos to help you understand bank recs from the ground up. So be sure to check it if you don't know how to do bank recs and then come back here to see this question solution. Of course, if you are comfortable with bank recs and you want to continue here, let's go ahead. Right, so we have the bank charges on the credit side because it's a payment or a decrease. And of course, since bank is an asset, to record a decrease, you have to credit the account. Okay, the next item in the table says standing order for vehicle insurance. So a standing order is an automatic payment that happens at regular intervals, usually monthly, where money is taken from your bank account and paid to someone who you direct the bank to pay on your behalf. 
So in other words, it's an automatic payment made every month or so. Now it comes straight out of your bank account. And if you don't remember, it means the payment will come out of your bank account, but you might have forgotten to record it in your cash book. So again, it's a payment and payments decrease the cash book balance. So that means we're going to have to put that item on the credit side. Now you're seeing insurance SO, SO stands for standing order. I was just trying to keep the cash book kind of narrow because when I'm editing these videos, I realize sometimes when I put too much stuff or I make the columns too wide, um, it makes it difficult to show the entire thing on the screen. And I have to either show it too, too small or keep swapping between the question and the solution, which could be a bit annoying. Sometimes we like things, certain things to be static and sometimes we like things to switch. But anyhow, let me not rant off on that. Sorry. Okay, the next item says, Check dated 30th August 2010 sent to supplier. Okay, so that's a payment that would have been recorded in the cash book. So we don't need to update the cash book with that item. The next item says check returned stamped insufficient funds 390. Okay, so when the bank returns a check to us, it's a check somebody paid us that we sent to the bank so that they could get the money to put in our account. But if the person doesn't have enough money in their account from which the bank could then pull to put in our account, They'll say, hey, what? This person literally doesn't have sufficient funds. It's insufficient funds or not sufficient funds. The bank will send us back and check and say, hey, what? Talk to your friend, <laughs> tell them they don't have enough money in their account and sort it out. Okay? So when we got that check from that person, it would have gone on the debit side and we would have felt, hey, we got paid, we got some money. But if there was insufficient funds and we were unable to get the money, we technically have to kind of cancel the receipt. And if the receipt was recorded on the debit side, guess what? To cancel the debit, you have to go on the credit side. So you'll see NSF check 390. Next, we have direct deposits from debtors 4,500. So a direct deposit will increase our account and that will go on the debit side of the bank account. The last item in the table says deposit to bank on the 31st of August, 2011. So that means that we took money from the cash book and put it in the bank account. So we deposited money. What happens is that there is a time difference between when you put the money in the bank account and when it shows up on your bank statement. So that's something called a bank lodgement and that will be recorded or dealt with in the bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so given that fact, I think that we are finished populating the updated cash book. So now let's balance it off. So to balance off the updated cash book, what we have to do, of course, is add up the items on the debit side, add up the items on the credit side, and find the difference. That's going to be put here, balance carried down. Both sides now total to the same thing, and the balance is brought down on the debit side. And now for the last part of the question. So it says, starting with the updated cash book balance, draw up a bank rec statement. Okay, now those of you who've watched my bank rec playlist know that uh, I don't prefer to start with the updated cash book balance. I prefer to start with the bank statement balance and they actually give it to us in this question because it, to me, it just seems better, more intuitive to do it that way. It's almost like you are updating the bank statement much in the same manner as we updated the cash book. But if you could be trained to do something one way, you could be trained to do the reverse, okay? So if we start with the updated cash book balance of 6,100, the first item we are gonna take a look at is the check dated 30th August, 2010 sent to a supplier. If we made a payment we will credit the cash book. That's a decrease. However, if it was sent on the 30th of August, chances are on the 31st of August, when the bank statement is drawn up, the creditor probably didn't have time to go to the bank, put the check in the bank. And then furthermore, even if that person did that, there's a, sometimes there's a five or seven day time lag between when the, they put the check in the bank and the money comes out. So that money wouldn't have come out of our bank account yet. So in order to, to kind of balance back to the bank statement balance, what we have to do is add back that unpresented check of 570. Now, the next item is the deposit to bank on the 31st of August, 2011. So I did explain that a bit earlier. So we would have taken money and put in it, put in, we would have taken money and put it in our bank account. However, again, there's a time lapse or a time difference, a time lag between when we physically put the money there, even if it's a check, or most likely if it's a check, or even if it's cash sometimes, and when it shows up on the bank statement. So we would have put money there, but the bank would not have picked it up yet. So even though we have the money, the bank statement wouldn't reflect it. So to go from the cash book balance to the bank statement balance, we have to subtract that item, bank lodgements. And when we add and subtract going down, we'll get 5,680, which as the question told us, was the balance on the bank statement. So you see, it's not that bad.
Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, my preference is to actually start the bank rec with the bank statement balance. The question did give that to us, which is the 5,680. Now, there's no one right order in which you have to put the items in your bank rec. I just kind of like to start with the lodgements first, right? So the deposit to the bank on 31st of August, like I said, we have money we've recorded in our bank on our bank account or cash book, but our actual bank account in the bank and the bank statement doesn't reflect it. So what we need to do in order for the information on both things to be the same, as in the information on the cash book and the bank statement to be the same, is we're going to add it to the bank statement balance, right? Because remember, we, like I said, we have the money, we got the money, so the cash book went up. The bank statement doesn't reflect it. But in order to, to reconcile these two, we'll add it to the bank statement balance because we do have the money. So we're just going to add it to show what the effect would be when the money actually gets into the bank account. The last thing we have to take a look at here is the check paid to supplier. So this is an unpresented check. Like I explained it previously, we paid somebody with a check, but it takes time for that money to come out of our account. We would have already credited our cash book or bank account to reflect the decrease. The bank statement would not yet reflect the decrease. But what we do is we subtract the money from it to show what happened when the money actually comes out. So we minus the unpresented checks as shown here. And when we add and subtract going down, we get the balance as per updated cash book as we got in the previous part of the question. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys. So there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2012 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Please remember to subscribe and don't forget to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PAA handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.